Hello everyone, I'm Kim and Aline, and today is Tuesday, August 8th. You are now watching Open, a program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to you. Don't forget to stay connected with us via social media at BronxNet TV. The Mayor's Public Engagement Unit launched a new tenant helpline service with live operators to provide support for New York residents. The tenant helpline system, along with PEU's overall tenant support team, remains a critical resource for New, Yorker, for New York tenants who face potential eviction, landlord harassment, or unacceptable living conditions. Joining me to discuss the helpline are Geneva Clark, a specialist for PEU, and Jasmine Batista, the Tenant Support Outreach Director. Thank you both so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, Jasmine, can you tell me about the public engagement unit's overall tenant support unit? Yes. Um, the tenant support unit was uh, started in 2015. Our focus was to ensure that tenants across New York understood their tenant rights, um, were connected to resources that were available to them, depending on the any sort of housing related issue that they were f um, facing. Our goal was to do proactive outreach across the city, whether that was door knocking in targeted neighborhoods or phone banking or texting um, to reach out to as many tenants as possible so that they could get connected to the resources to assist them with their issues. Now, as mentioned, there's a helpline. Uh, can you just talk about what that is and basically what inspired the creation of it? Yes. So the helpline was launched in 2020 and we're super ex excited to announce that we are live now. Um, during the pandemic, um, our team, um, you know, during the pandemic, there was a lot of stop in regards to proactive outreach uh, with door knocking due to the pandemic. Our goal was to ensure that tenants were still informed of their tenant rights and we were able to assist them throughout that time during the pandemic by informing them about new policies that were happening, depending on like, let's say like the eviction moratorium, moratorium connecting them to resources such as rent relief, um, guiding them through the process, process through eviction um, in housing court. So we wanted to ensure that even though there was a pandemic, that there was a resource that tenants can reach out to if they were facing a housing related issue and get connected to a want to a specialist that could guide them through the process of their specific issue that they were facing. Now, I'm really curious to know, you may have mentioned it a little bit, what, what was the process of getting assistance like before the helpline? Um, and I guess I could ask that like on both ends from the person for the New Yorker who needs the resource and for the person who is providing the resource. So prior to the helpline, our focus was um, going to targeted neighborhoods, door knocking, tabling with CBOs and other city agencies. Uh, but with the helpline, this has created a different pathway. So if a tenant is facing an issue as of like, let's say right now, they have the opportunity to call someone for assistance to guide them through that emergency situation that they're going through. Now, Geneva, what are some of the issues the helpline will address? Some issues I can name would be eviction, repair issues, and last but not least, um, I'm sorry. Is it um, maybe landlord? Is it landlord it's, it's harassment? harassment? Yes. Well, can, can you actually um, <laughs> expand on that challenge? I know a lot of these are challenges challenge for so many New Yorkers, uh, but landlord harassment um, was the first time that I've ever heard of something like this mm -hmm. happening. Can you just talk about what that is and, you know, what classifies as landlord harassment? So harassment from the landlord can consist of many things, but most importantly, three main things that we've been getting calls on is one, when the tenant is receiving um, notices stating they have to vacate the unit within maybe 10 days, 14 days without um without the proper legal legal process of evicting a tenant. It could be a landlord having their family harass the tenants as far as like coming and bullying them and try to try to get them out of the unit. And last but not least, um, Uh, There's a lot of shutoffs as yes. well yes. when it comes to harassment. Yes. We, we've noticed, especially during the pandemic, that um, there are some landlords who have used that as an opportunity to harass tenants by pushing them out of their units and also, in many cases, um, shutting their utility services as well. 
Mm, oh, wow. So I've, I've heard of that before. So it's so good to hear that like this is what classifies as landlord harassment because so many people probably are going through this yes. and they don't know that this is considered harassment. Mm -hmm. How do you guide callers or just anyone you help through that? Like, how do you let them know like this is not OK mm -hmm. uh, for this to be happening? Well, one, I provide them legal resources so that they can be provided legal advice. I let them know that they can file an HP action for harassment at housing court and legal aid would be able to guide them through that process and what it looks like. And also, if they reside in a rent stabilized, I let them know that they can go through HCR and file a harassment through um, through HCR against the, the landlord as well. Now, something else that was mentioned that was really important that I quickly want to highlight um, is if your landlord says you have to leave like in 10 days, can you just give us like uh, the rundown of like what that's supposed to actually look like? Because uh, I can imagine that it's pretty alarming for someone to, you know, see on their door that they have to leave their home, that they've probably been living for some years in 10 days. So can you just expand like uh, what they should do if they actually do see something like that? Let's say that the tenant is residing in the market rate unit. So if let's say that they, they their lease re, um, expires in August and the landlord says provides a, a 10 day notice. No, they have to provide sufficient notice if they've been living, for example, for two years. They have to provide them with a 90 day notice stating we're not renewing your lease due to whatever the, the circumstance may be, or if they, even if they want to raise the rent, they have to provide sufficient notice to the landlord, to the tenant, sorry, stating the rent will be increased, whether it's $200, $300. And that is the process for. Well, thank you yes. so much mm -hmm. for clarifying that. Now, um, Jasmine, I mean, what are some of PEU's other outreach efforts? So, as I mentioned, you know, our goal is to make sure that we're reaching out to every single New Yorker. Um, and that comes in the form of whether it is door knocking, whether it's tabling with CBOs, elected officials um, at events. Uh, we also focus a lot on phone banking and also texting. We want to make sure that, you know, no matter, you know, if you're a senior or a student or just, you know, uh, someone who's going to work every day that you have all these avenues to reach out to the tenant support. So we want to make sure that we provide these services that are available to them, um, even on our website. Um, there's a lot of information on our website as well that tenants could um, learn more about our program, but also um, connect with one of our specialists. Uh, we also have the tenant portal um, for the city. So if we have tenants who want to navigate their situation on their own, they're able to navigate it. Um, and if they want more information or more assistance, they could also connect by filling out our contact form to get connected with us. Now, this work isn't easy, I'm sure. Like you're dealing with so many people's livelihoods, you know, you know, what keeps you passionate to keep going and help people? And I'm curious to know from you both. I will start with you, though. What keeps me going is when we receive a phone call and the tenant may be devastated, of course, because they they could be going through some really harsh um, issues and relate, relate, relating to their apartment and their livelihood. And the one thing that keeps me going is getting at the end of a call. Thank you so much. You provided me so much resources. I didn't even know New York had all these resources where we could be connected to to try to, you know, get their their matters resolved. And what inspires you? I mean, I think is um, similar to what mm -hmm. Geneva said is like hearing the tenants, um, but also your personal experience. Yes. Right. Um, this could be our neighbor, a family member. Mm -hmm. It could be ourselves that are facing a lot of these um, housing related issues. Sometimes many of our specialists are like, wow, like mm -hmm. this is so much more information that I've also learned mm -hmm. myself to you know, know how to navigate my situation or provide information to other folks. The goal is like, we want to make sure that tenants can advocate for themselves. And if we could do preventive services, whereas, you know, at the moment, a tenant may not, you know, be in court. But as Geneva mentioned, when it comes to harassment, a tenant could have just received, you know, their landlord could say, oh, you have to leave within this certain mm -hmm. time. A tenant understanding their rights at that moment and understanding what that process looks like when it comes to eviction is so much more supportive and, you know, it, it relieves some sort of stress yes. from a tenant at any cost. 
Now, I understand that the helpline also connects people to other city programs. Can you expand on this? And why was this important to include? Extremely important because there is no such thing as one size fits all. Um, a lot of the situations that we come across with tenants that are calling the helpline is situations where multiple city agencies could come and assist with specific resources. Um, if we have a client who may be facing um, discrimination, we want to make sure that, yes, we're connecting them to legal. Yes, we're informing them about their rights. But there is also other agencies that could assist with, you know, following up with the landlord or following, you know, filing a case in court. So CCHR, you know, the Commission of Human Rights, things like that. We want to ensure our goal, especially on our end, is that um, we focus a lot on building those relationships with other city agencies to expand on you know, ways that we could navigate a specific case um, and finding more resolutions than just, you know, focusing on just, just the issue above. Like, we want to pay attention to the underlying issues as well. Now, I, I wanted to know what the response from New Yorkers have been like, but I thought, you know, when you mentioned that even some of the specialists were like, wow, I'm learning from this. I mm -hmm. thought that was uh, kind of an amazing thing mm -hmm. to hear because, uh, Doing that work also educates the people who are doing it. Can you just expand on maybe the importance of that, especially uh, from your position as well? Um, I can say that is very important because I myself went through a situation where my management office was harassing me. They were sending me threatening letters, saying they're going to do a holdover case against me because of a document that they didn't receive. I mailed the document three times. I even spoke to the manager of my site and she was even confused. Like, I don't know what's going on. They're providing me wrong numbers to contact them to make sure that they got the notice. And then I said, you know what? Let me do what I do for tenants. I contacted legal aid and they gave me very good advice. And I didn't even know I could file a, a, a harassment complaint against um I guess my management office through HCR. So that was that was definitely enlightening, knowing that there, you know, I can be assisted too. Right. And I'm I'm human and I will I go through the same things just as well as the tenants that's calling us for assistance. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh Jasmine, can you quickly just let people know how they can actually contact the helpline? Yes. So anybody that's facing a housing related issue can call 311 and ask for the tenant helpline. All right. Well, I want to thank you both so much for joining us. Thank, thank you, you so for much. having us. Thank you. As mentioned, if you are a tenant in need of help, please call 311 and say tenant hotline. Also, if you would like to learn more about the PEU's efforts to support tenants, please go to their website, which you can see on the screen below. Don't go away. We'll be back with more open right after this.